All right, for more on how this is affecting some countries where the Zika virus is spreading, let's bring in Andrew Wilson. He's the founder of Doctors for Doctors, a charity that provides medical school scholarships to students in Nicaragua, and he joins us now from Toronto. Thanks for joining us today, Andrew. How is Nicaragua handling the spread of Zika? Well, uh, thank you, Marilla, for having me. Um, firstly, Nicaragua, we reached out to our students this morning, and we're still waiting to hear back on how exactly it's going to affect the communities that our students are working in in Nicaragua, and I'll let you know as soon as we get uh, more information. But I think it's uh, safe to say that the, the, the clear focus is going to be prevention. Advice has been, I understand, for women there to avoid getting pregnant, to put mm -hmm. off getting pregnant for some time, a year or two. Is that a message that's being received by the population? Um, it's really tricky to say, but I think, uh, generally speaking, that there's a lot of disconnected communities in rural areas within these countries in particular, especially in Nicaragua. Um, and I don't think this advice is going to be uh, followed very seriously. So what are the other preventative measures that are being taken? Mm. The other preventative measures uh, that are being taken right now, I, I'm, to be honest, I, I don't know too much about those. All right. Sorry. Babies who are born uh, with microcephaly, of course, uh, mm. they believe that there is a link here to the Zika virus. What does a family in Nicaragua uh, do? How are they mm. able to cope with something like that, or are they? Yeah, and, and this is uh, definitely something that I do have experience with. Um, families in Nicaragua um, typically don't have the knowledge or the resources to actually cope with long-term neurological disorders and the complications of, uh, of this virus. And that's definitely my uh, main concern with Doctors for Doctors and Nurses for Nurses, where the solution becomes, instead of a more quick kind of patchwork, the solution is more focused around um, long-term solutions that um, really support local communities to really get together and um, support each other through these, these long-term diseases. Has there been any input from the government there on, on dealing with that? Uh, none that I know of, no. So do those families get any support at all? Um, in certain communities, it's, it's much harder than others, uh, that I can say. Meaning what? Um, in certain communities, uh, it's very hard to actually Basically, if you have a long-term neurological deficit or, or a large family with these, these health implications, it's very hard to, uh, to walk or travel to a medical facility. You know, sometimes hospitals or clinics are over two hours away for some of these families. All right. Andrew Wilson is with Doctors for Doctors, joining us from Toronto today. Thank you for that. Thank you, Morella.